Imagine traveling to Chicago or Pittsburgh from the Columbus region in less than 30 minutes. That possibility is called the Midwest Connect. The Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission, together with the Columbus Partnership and numerous partners, is proposing this Hyperloop route. There's currently no direct freight or rail line connection along this corridor, and the geography lends to the linking of these three cities. Now we will talk to Nathaniel, and as you'll find out, he was a part of the Midwest Connect team, which advanced as a finalist in the Virgin Hyperloop One Global Challenge. Hi Nathaniel, and welcome uh, to In the Hyperloop. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So I briefly mentioned in the introduction that you are a Competitive Advantage Program Manager at the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission. Can you tell me about the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission and how your role fits in, in their work? And their mission. Absolutely. So the Mid Ohio Regional Planning Commission, we're an association of local governments here in Central Ohio. Uh, we work in a number of areas: energy policy, transportation, sustainability, um, and we're also the federally designated Metropolitan Planning Organization, or MPO, um, for Central Ohio. And so we're thinking about long-range transportation planning um, all the time, thinking about making connections to neighboring regions, and so that's sort of where our interest in Hyperloop comes in. Um, my specific role is um, to look for opportunities to um, advance infrastructure projects that are going to make Central Ohio more competitive um, and give us a competitive advantage in attracting talented professionals, attracting economic development, attracting growth, that kind of thing. Um, and so we see, you know, connecting to um, the globalized world, faster connections, you know, more options, those types of things is uh, right along with that and moving Columbus forward. That's, that's really cool. So was it... Um kind of a personal interest that you first became interested in Hyperloop or more of a professional interest? Um, it was a professional interest. Um, you know, Morphsy became aware of the Hyperloop One Global Challenge in mid-2016. Um, and, you know, as we started to look into the technology and its development, um, we really saw a lot of potential in it and decided to go forward with the challenge. So, um, you know, my interest was kind of peaked um, through all that work and um, something very exciting to work on. So how do you think um, a future with Hyperloop or autonomous mobi mobility will affect, you know, an urban and a rural uh, community? Sure. So, you know, we see a, a lot of potential with Hyperloop. You know, the short travel times um, that are created by the speed of Hyperloop obviously have a significant impact on things like passenger travel, and that's been talked about a lot. Um, it can redefine job markets and, um, you know, because it allows you know the potential for super long distance commuting. Um, it also allows for better better access to healthcare and educational institutions that are often clustered in you know cities or urban areas. Um, what we don't see talked about as much, but we think is just as exciting as the potential benefit to freight. Mm. Um, and as you may be aware, the Midwest um, you know is a sort of the epicenter for freight movements in the the country. We have. Um, you know, half of the population in North America or in the United States and a, um, a third of the population in Canada um, is within 500 miles of wow. Columbus in, in our region. And um, Columbus, Pittsburgh, uh, Chicago all have significant transportation assets, freight assets and rail, air, um, ports, and, and again, that proximity. So we see um, having up done freight. You know, we think that in the Midwest, we can leverage our manufacturing assets, um, the products that we make here, we can get to market faster, you know, distribute quicker. Mm -hmm. um, but we can also manufacture the Hyperloop right here, um, both the infrastructure and the vehicles. You know, we, we think we have that capability. Um, and, you know, we've thought about a lot of different potential. You know, it could even be something like fresh foods and getting um, foods from, you know, the farm to, the, you know, the city table quicker. Um, and fix things like food deserts and, and mm. communities and things like that. So um, in some ways, the possibilities are really infinite. We've tried to brainstorm, but you know, we know we haven't thought of all the, the potential uses. That's, that's really clever. I, uh, I've yet to you know, hear people talking about food, and you know, it, it requires a lot of uh, transportation energy to transport food, and you have to be very quick or else it will spoil. So that's a very really cool use case. So in your role as a competitive advantage program manager, what are some of the biggest challenges that you fe face um, in your day-to-day -day job? Sure. So in, in terms of thinking about something like Hyperloop, mm -hmm. you know, I think one of the, the challenges is that you know this is a brand new technology, and so there's no standard for 
how to plan for this, how to implement it. You know, we don't know what the regulation is going to look like, those types of things. And so um, that means that we have to be a little bit more creative than um, we would when we're working on a traditional transportation project. But um, and although that can be challenging at times, I think we really look at that as a really fun opportunity to, you know, to be sort of in on the ground floor, you know, when a new mode is coming together. And so we've that, you know, that creativity is, is kind of fun and, and you know, makes the day interesting. That's a good. That's a good point. You change a, a challenge into an opportunity, and that kind of goes into my next question of you know what do you love about uh, working either with these new technologies or in your community or in your role in particular. Right. Um, you know. So here in Ohio, we are. You know. Um, you probably know we're the birthplace of flight, and we're very proud of that. Um, there's another state down south that has some claim, but um, you know that. This is where the, the genius came from here in the state. Yep. Um, and you know, we sort of see that you know, working with Hyperloop is, is kind of like you know, working with the Wright brothers of our time. And you know, we're not the Wright brothers, but you know, the folks out at Virgin Hyperloop One and the Nevada Desert and some of the other companies that are developing this technology, you know, they're, they're the Wright brothers of their time and you know, they're working towards their Kitty Hawk moment and all that. And so it's really exciting um, to be on the ground floor of that, to think about the amazing impact that this new technology can have. And again, you know, I don't think anyone fully understands, you know, how far this technology can go. So that's really exciting to think about. And, um, you know, here in Columbus, um, you, know, you may be aware, we won the USDOT Smart Cities Grant Award. Um, and so we're implementing this huge Smart Columbus package. Um, it's a $50 million grant, but it's expected to leverage a billion dollars in private investment. Wow. Uh, in deployment of smart technology, um, autonomous vehicles, and we think Hyperloop fits right in with that. Um, but it's just really exciting to live and work in a community that wants to be at the forefront of innovation like that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, here in the Midwest, I think that's not necessarily always um, the the thought that that's where innovation and is coming from in this century. But it you know it is, and it's happening right here in Columbus. That's that's awesome. And congratulations uh, on winning the Smart Cities Challenge grants. You know, we're really excited about exploring the potential. Um, I think it's it's exciting as a, a local government and a group of local governments to be part of that and to have partners all across the corridor. Um, you know, one thing that I neglected to mention is that um, while MORPSI is, you know, um, front and center in this initiative and the Midwest Connect project, that mm -hmm. we have a number of partners from Chicago to Pittsburgh. Um, both in the um, you know government role and the the public world, but also in the private sector. You know, a big partner here is the Columbus Partnership, um, which is a group of local CEOs who are always looking at how they can drive Columbus forward. They're a big partner in Smart Columbus too. Um, but you know, it is really a coalition of you know folks all on the corridor, and we're just a small part of it. But I'm really excited about it. Well, that's, that's really great. Um, and thanks for elaborating a little bit more on just how many groups are involved. This is a huge um, group effort for the region, and it really shows the strength of how all these cities want to act together as one. Um, so thank you so much, Nathaniel, uh, for being in the Hyperloop. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.